Hey ladies, welcome to episode 134, principle number one of intuitive eating, reject the diet mentality. I'm pretty geeked to be diving into this with you today, so let's just get started. Welcome to the Health, Life, and More for Women podcast. This is a podcast for women who are ready to ditch diets, ditch the scale, and food guilt forever, and instead invite peace with food, body trust and confidence in all of your choices this show will shed some light on sneaky ways diet culture has infiltrated your thoughts your family and your well-being i believe that no matter the episode you'll walk away feeling informed inspired and encouraged i'm your host jennifer damato i'm a certified intuitive eating counselor coach a mom of four daughters a lover of all things pink, and I can't wait to dive into each and every episode with you. Let's dive in now. Well, the Intuitive Eating Principle series is now officially underway. (laughs) If you happen to miss episode 133, where I talked about what is and is not intuitive eating, and kind of, you know, outlined where we're going to go, what I'm doing for this series, you can actually pause this episode, head back over there. There's also all the information on how to get the workbook that goes along with this entire series. That's going to help you keep the notes organized, have a place where all the key points from the episode are. I have bonus reflection questions in there as well. This is an opportunity for you to dive deeper. So if you haven't grabbed that or listened to that episode, pause now, head into the show notes. I've linked last week's episode and the workbook again, so you can just be set up for success as we dive into the principles of intuitive eating. Now, speaking of that, here we are. Principle number one, reject the diet mentality. I said in last week's episode in the first of the series that there's a reason this is the first principle. I actually find myself saying, if you're struggling, if you're really struggling with any of the other principles, come back to this one and it can be used as kind of a a check-in, a check-in with your thoughts, a check-in with your surroundings. Where has diet culture come back? Has it infiltrated your thoughts, your space, your social media feed? Like, are you kind of finding yourself getting sucked back into it? This is like the anchor. Come back to this one. It's really even why I think taking your own notes and jotting some things down, writing questions you have, doing the you know bonus reflection questions is so important because it helps you really solidify your own anchor. Now, even listening to this, you might really easily agree with me that diets suck. Like they're just not fun. I I don't even actually think I've ever met anyone who's been like, oh, I love dieting. Like I just can't wait to stop eating foods I love and to really just control everything about, you know, my body and eating. Like, oh, I'm really looking forward to that. No, I mean, there is a level of like excitement that happens in our brain when we think about going on that next diet because we believe we just haven't found the right one yet. And why do we believe it? It's because we're given that messaging again and again and again. I mean, we're actually told we don't have willpower. We're told we just hadn't figured it out yet. We're told we are the problem. When in fact, <laughs> ready, dun, 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 diets don't work. Diets do not work. Would you actually believe, and I'm telling you something true, so maybe you believe it or not, but it's true anyway. <laughs> Since the 1940s, take a moment, think about how long ago that was, the 1940s, there's this growing body of research that's actually showing us that the act of dieting promotes, leads to, has that little dotted line that goes, hey, where are we headed? Weight gain. It doesn't really like, age is not a, a factor because they are, they're looking at all different age groups. And this is, you know, children, teens, adults, that dieting leads to weight gain. 
if we really believed that to be true, we'd probably never, ever, ever go on that first diet. If we actually knew the research, looked into this, we'd say, well, why in the world would I want to do this? Like there has to be something else. But from a young age, we're inundated with messaging about dieting. And most of us are having it modeled for us every day. It's hard to find someone, not impossible, just difficult, to find someone who didn't watch a parent or guardian or mentor or somebody who, you know, they looked up to in their life who was dieting. I mean, they've had this modeled for them from the time they were a young age to where it's been so normalized to diet. So why don't diets work? In a general sense, diets don't work because your brain doesn't know you're on a diet. I mean, okay, I know that doesn't sound like it makes sense, but I promise you the the fundamental part of your body only knows feast and famine. It's not like, oh, you know, hey, I'm trying Weight Watchers for a little while and, you know, wanting to lose some weight. Your brain goes, wait a minute, we're not eating. Wait a minute, why aren't we eating? We're not eating. Okay, I'm going to make sure I hold on to everything possible in this body because I don't know when you're going to feed me again. Or it loses weight and then says, "Um, listen, I have been starving long enough. Here's what's going to happen. We're going to eat everything in sight. We're going to make sure we get as much food in as possible because I don't know the next time you're going to be in this famine. So I better be prepared. That's how your body was built. It's doing what it knows to do. That yo-yo dieting, that weight fluctuating, right? The up and down is actually your body responding to dieting. I told you it sucks. It really does. I always think about my 17-year-old self and if she knew what I know, I would have had breakfast. I would have eaten the food. I would have just not told myself that this is going to work, like I'm going to find the thing that works. No, it doesn't work. It's never worked. And what you see promoted from diet culture are (laughs) like the 1 to 2% of people whose, you know, weight set point is a smaller body, they are they reach this, right? And it and it stays off and we think, "Well, it should work for me." That should work for me when in fact, it is literally like 2% of people who lose weight and keep it off. And this is just a small part of why rejecting diet mentality is important. We need to address something very important about weight. Health and weight are not synonymous. Those two words do not mean the same thing. Your weight is not reflective of your health. There are people in smaller sized bodies who unfortunately are not very healthy. They're not taking care of themselves. They might have high cholesterol. They might have blood sugar issues. You know, they might have disease going on in their body. There are people in larger size bodies who are as healthy as anyone on this earth could possibly be. They have no issues, no health markers that are concerning. They are active. They are moving. Health and weight are not synonymous. Unfortunately, we're not taught that. We are taught that when you look at someone and see their size, you can certainly tell what their health is. It's malarkey. (laughs) Like it is bull hockey. Like how many words can I say that are not total like me cussing on the podcast? (laughs) Health is a behavior. It's not a number. It's not this arbitrary, you know, stand on a scale on any given day and that number changes thing. Health is a behavior. Success is not about the number on the scale. You know what success in your health is? What is, I mean, okay, maybe I just want to pose it as a question. Ask yourself, like, what is success for me? Maybe it's going to therapy. Maybe it's getting the help for the thoughts that you're having, that overwhelming sense, the anxiety or the depression or the trauma. 
Maybe it's moving your body more, maybe just being active, getting up, you know, stretching, you know, throughout the day, like that feels really good and healthy. It's improved digestion. It's better sleep. You do not need to lose weight to improve these things. I think one other um, reason to reject the diet mentality that, you know, you may not consider, but I want you to take a moment with is stress. Diets cause stress, whether you can see it on the outside externally, or it's just the internal stress going on in your body that you may not see, but you are feeling that stress. Your body's feeling the stress. Your body is under this chronic low level stress on that diet. That stress is so much worse for you than if you gained weight. Like there's actual data showing us how that stress is such a contributing factor to all of these issues. So is the weight fluctuation. So if we could just in our head understand to say, okay, like diets don't work. I know it always leads us to then what, which is why we're here, right? If diets don't work, then what do I do? That's why we're here. But I do believe we need to address what diets have done. Could we take a moment and even just acknowledge the damage that diets have done? They've done to our body with the yo-yo dieting, with the stress, with affecting our sleep, our mood, how we talk to ourselves, like our um, negative self-talk increase because of dieting. Can we acknowledge the damage that diets have done to us, but also could we look at it outside of ourselves and look at the damage that diets have done in how we treat other people, how we treat people in marginalized you know, bodies, how we treat others who are in a different size body than our, our own. This is a bigger issue. Diets, diets have caused eating disorders. If that alone does not stop us in our tracks to say, this is damaging, I, I, I honestly don't know. I don't know what else will, will get us to that point. So I believe acknowledging kind of the, the global damage, if you will, but then for yourself, what damage have, have diets done to you? How much have they really messed up your relationship with food? What have they taken away from being able to trust yourself? So what do you do? Like what's next then? Like how do you reject the diet mentality? I think that's always like the next step we want to take is, all right, if I believe it, I know it, but how do I actually reject the diet mentality? First and foremost, can we just heap on self-compassion? Like to me, that is key in everything that we do because it's not going to go perfectly. We've also made these choices that we're now living with, you know, in our relationship with food and body that we just need to have some deeper compassion for ourselves. I believe if we can first start there and put things in place to be more compassionate when the negative thoughts come up, when we might have some food guilt that we don't want to have anymore, that we're just compassionate and kind to ourselves. I think it's important to also address forgiveness. You know, we might need to forgive ourselves. We might need to really just work on forgiving ourselves for that first diet. You know, having a conversation with my 17-year-old self to be like, I get it. I get why you did it. I totally forgive you starting this entire process. But I think more often, we might need to forgive someone in our life that started us on this path, whether knowingly or unknowingly that we might need to forgive the mom who took us to the Weight Watchers when we were eight. I'm using that as an example because I've heard it more times than I'd like to have ever heard it. We might need to forgive that person who made a comment about our body which started us on this trajectory of disordered eating. We might need to forgive ourselves, but we might need to forgive others. And I'm not saying that means you need to call somebody up. I'm saying for your own heart, for your own peace, for your own mind. What about forgiveness? Then I think it's important to start just recognizing. I'm not saying you're correcting it. I'm not using the word pivoting or reframing or any of those things. Recognize 
your diet thinking. You know, you've been thinking this way for a very long time, right? Like probably more years than you care to remember. So those thoughts might be the first thought you have is the diet thought. And the first step in changing those thoughts is recognizing them, seeing it. And then remember, go back to that compassion part, like, Ooh, it's all right. I know that you think this because you've been thinking it for so long. You were taught, you were given these messages, you know, these things you believe that are not true. And then you can actually do some work to decide what do you believe? What is the thought you want to be having? I always think about this with (laughs) my own story with pizza. You know, I had so many diet thoughts about pizza. Poor pizza. (laughs) And they just swirled in my head years without eating it. And those same years of not eating, it was years of binging on it when I had it in front of me and recognizing those thoughts I had about this particular food. I was able to start seeing it, have compassion, let it go, and then choose what I believed. Pizza is delicious. (laughs) And pizza definitely always has a place in my life. And if I want pizza, I'm going to have the pizza and enjoy the pizza. Because when I do that, I no longer binge on pizza. It's amazing. So recognize diet thinking. Lastly, I I do want to share that I think it's important we do what we can to remove the dieting tools, the triggers, the things that are like residual leftover um, things from diet culture that are still maybe in our house. Maybe it's food containers, maybe it's certain clothing, maybe it's your social media feed, maybe you still have a scale um, and oh, cookbooks even, you know, from those diets. Really, it's anything that triggers you and pulls you back in like that magnet that pulls you back into diet culture. I actually um, have provided in the workbook a direct link to my diet detox, which is a checklist going through all different areas that you can start removing diet culture from your life. You know, one last note I want to make about rejecting the diet mentality is that this is ongoing. I don't ever want um, to present this as once you've done it, you'll never ever do it again. I don't really think that's true. It's why I say this is the anchor. You might have to come back to this because we are inundated as even as much as we detox, you know, from diet culture, we walk away from it, we remove the triggers. You can be walking around the mall and overhear that diet conversation. You can be in the grocery store and see all the marketing that uses diet culture language and feel triggered and have a moment and, you know, kind of just start swirling in your head. Those things will happen. So being kind with yourself and acknowledging this is also ongoing that new things might come up, especially as you get deeper into this work, you might uncover something new that you weren't able to address before. One of those things you might be working on letting go of that might come up is really addressing the fantasy you had when it came to losing weight. There's a reason we started and it usually was this built-in idea of what our life would look like, uh, life would be like, we would experience when we were in a smaller body, a thin body, when we lost X amount of weight. And when that didn't happen, oh, it can be so heartbreaking. And we might not be able to even address that right away. So one of the things of, you know, and, and components of rejecting the diet mentality is letting go of the fantasy. And if you feel like you can address that, address it. If it's one of those things you're like, I need to come back to that, you know, after I remove the tools, when I start doing this work is really letting go of that fantasy. I'd say, come back to it when you can, because I do believe that one has a lot of unpacking. All right. Rejecting the diet mentality is the number one principle because it serves as our anchor. Not only does it remove the diet tools, It helps us to admit and acknowledge that diets don't work. It increases self-compassion, opens up the door for any forgiveness that might need to happen, and helps us really set the stage for all of the other principles of intuitive eating. 
Now I have some amazing bonus reflective questions for you to kind of dig deeper into your own story in the workbook. So like I said, if you hadn't grabbed it, be sure to grab it now, download it. You know, you can print those pages right, right on there. You can use them as your framework and write in your journal, but grab that so you can start on this process of rejecting the diet mentality. Or if you've already been on this journey, you can dig a little deeper, even into where you are now and where you want to go. All right. The next episode, episode 135 is principle number two, honoring your hunger. And I'm going to tell you right now, (laughs) for whatever reason, now I know the reason. (laughs) It's my favorite principle to talk about. And I can't wait to share more with you. Hey ladies, have you heard the news? I have an amazing intuitive eating principle series right here on the podcast. And to help you dig deeper into your relationship with food and body, I have created a downloadable workbook that goes right along with the series. This is going to help you dig a little deeper into your own health, your own food story and eating experience. Included is a weekly release of workbook pages, which will have a summary of key points from the episode, a personal notes section, and here's the most important part. You're going to have bonus reflection questions to go along with each of the episodes. This is going to help you dig a little deeper, understand yourself and your relationship with food and body better. You can purchase this workbook at any time and go through episodes 133 to 143. This workbook that I've created is for someone who is brand new to intuitive eating, just starting to learn. This is also for somebody who has really no idea what intuitive eating is at all. This workbook is also helpful if you have been on the intuitive eating journey and you just want to continue on that and dig a little deeper head to healthcoachforlife.com slash IE workbook or head into the show notes of any of the episodes from the series.